गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर थ्री सॉरी लेक्चर नंबर थर्टीन एंड टूडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ कंप्लीटली न्यू चैप्टर विच इज एनालिसिस ऑफ प्लेन ट्रसिस ट्रस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वेन इट कम्स टू इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स फॉर मैकेनिकल फॉर सिविल एज वेल एज फॉर एक्सी बिकॉज एवरी अदर ईयर we are getting a question from trusses for the past 10 years i have observed that almost every year we are getting a question from this topic so it makes it a very very important topic from the point of view of gate for me ce as well as xc so let's start the chapter but before that let's solve the question the assignment question that i gave you in the last class related to screw jack a clamp is used to hold two pieces of wood together as shown the clamp has a double square thread of mean diameter equal to 10 mm with a pitch of 2 mm coefficient of friction is 0.3 if a maximum couple of 40 newton meter is applied in tightening the clamp then the force exerted on the pieces of the wood is so understand what is happening here here we have this clamp which is nothing but a screw jack it works as a screw jack okay now we are holding these two wooden pieces using this screw jack assume that now this screw jack how it is holding these pieces when you turn this screw it works as if the screw jack is lifting the weight okay just like that here it is lifting this screw which will tighten this and which will hold the pieces wooden pieces together okay so if you want to relate this with screw jack in screw jack the operation that we use for lifting the wooden piece the same thing is happening here in case of tightening this piece now if you want to loosen this if you want to loosen the clamps then what will you do the same operation that you do in screw jack for lowering the weight so when you will lower the weight what happens this screw will go down like this so the clamp will loosen so raising the weight is equivalent to tightening this clamp and lowering the weight is equivalent to losing this clamp okay so you can now apply the same equations of screw jack in this case okay so here we have the torque what is the value of torque yesterday we saw that if you are applying a force p on the screw like this this is the screw okay and you are applying the force on the edge of this screw assume you are applying the force on the edge of the screw okay and this is creating the torque how much is the torque the torque is 40 newton meter okay let's say this force is p so from the center to here what will be the distance d by 2 so 40 newton meter is p into d by 2 p into d by 2 is 40 newton meter okay so this will be p into what is the diameter diameter is mean diameter is 10 mm so i will convert it in newton meter because here i am putting it in meter na so this will be in meter so from here i will get the value of p okay so it will be 80 divided by 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 means 8000 newton so i have got the value of p now what i want to do is i want to use this value of p in order to find the value of w because the force exerted on the piece of wood will be equivalent to the weight w c when you put the weight on the screw jack that weight is acting like this right here also if you are tightening this clamp then the screw jack will apply a force on the wood like this so the wood will apply equal and opposite force on the screw like this and that force is w okay so the screw jack is applying a force w on the wooden piece and wooden piece is applying the equivalent force w on the screw jack okay 
so we are want we want to calculate w using the value of p but before that we need to find theta and phi so what is theta it is 10 inverse of l by pi d okay where l is the lead now here the pitch is given and nothing is mentioned sorry double square thread it is mentioned okay so double square thread means lead will be two times of pitch divided by pi into d which is 10 mm so from here you will get the value of theta so it will be 10 inverse of 4 divided by 10 pi so i am getting 7.256 degrees now phi which is friction angle is 10 inverse of mu and mu is how much mu is how much 0.3 so this will give you the value of phi 16.7 degree so from here i will use this equation p equals to w 10 theta plus phi okay p is 8000 newton w is unknown theta is 7.256 and phi is 16.7 so from here i will get the value of w so it will be 10 8000 divided by 10 of 7.256 plus 16.7 and i am getting 18000 and 5 point 5 newton are they asking us the answer in newton no they are asking us in kilo newton so it is 18.005 kilo newton so this is the force exerted by the screws on this wooden piece 18 kilo newton i hope you understood how you can find the equivalent case of screw jack with the clamp let's move on to the today's topic so today we are going to understand first what is a structure then we'll understand the difference between truss and frames then we'll understand types of trusses and then we will solve problems using method of joints today's class is going to be really interesting because you are going to understand very interesting topics like what is the difference between a truss and a frame and let me tell you, you won't find this type of explanation anywhere else. Okay. Let's first talk about the structure. What is a structure? See, as a mechanical engineer, we deal with two things, structures and machines. The difference between structure, both structure and machines are entities which are made of different elements connected together different members connected together a structure is also an entity an object which is made of different members connected together and machines are also made of different members connected together so just by looking at the object you cannot tell whether it is a machine or a structure so what is the difference between them in case of machines when you turn on the machine all the members will start moving so they are applying force on each other and they are also transferring motion to each other so there is a transfer of force as well as motion between members right but in case of structure there is no relative motion between the members the members are only transferring force on each other if i take the example of a car then the body of the car the door the roof the chassis this is a structure the body parts of the car are not moving relative to each other for example side mirror is the side mirror moving relative to the roof no the chassis is the chassis moving relative to the door no don't say that while opening or closing the door it is moving that's a different thing but 
as a whole if you see the body of the car including the chassis they are fixed relative to each other they are not moving relative to each other continuously so i will call this body of the car along with the chassis as a structure but when i consider the engine and the transmission these parts are moving with respect to each other so this is a machine so a car is a combination of a machine and a structure we have installed the machine inside a structure so that it can move and we can sit in it right but if you consider a bridge that bridge is a structure because the parts of bridge are not moving relative to each other yes so i hope you have understood what is a structure so a structure is assembly of several members connected together assembly of several members you will not find a single member in a structure that that is not a structure so structure means we have connected several members together and they are used in order to sustain heavy loads for example let's say a train needs to pass from one corner of a river to another corner of a river okay so i will lay track from one point to another point but this track it will be subjected to the weight of the train when the train will move on the track it will be subjected to the weight of the train so that track has to be supported that heavy weight has to be supported and that too over a very long distance right when you will build that bridge it is going to be a very long distance so a structure is used to sustain heavy loads and that too over a long distance i hope it is clear to you now when it comes to structures they are of two types look at this this is the example of a structure okay this is a bridge this is an example of a structure this is what this is a building okay this is the example of a structure this is what this is a garage okay the roof of the garage is supported on this okay so this is a structure now the structure can be divided into two categories now here comes the interesting part there are truss and there is frame both are structures if you just look at it you can't say whether it is a truss or a frame can you tell me whether this is a truss or a frame no can you tell me whether this is a truss or a frame no can you tell me this is a truss or a frame no so what is the difference between truss and frame both are structure only the difference is in the analysis of them analysis means what see our objective is when the car will move on this road or the people will move on this road how much load will be carried by this member this member this member this member this member why because we want to design these members okay and in order to design these members we need to know how much load are they going to carry then only i will be able to calculate now okay if the member is subjected to this much load then its diameter must be this much okay so in order to design these members in order to find what should be their diameter what should be their area what should be the material of these members in order to design that we need to first find out how much force each member will be carrying okay so that is known as the analysis of truss or analysis of frames now why we have divided the structure into these two categories it is because the procedure of analysis the procedure of finding the force in each member is different in this case and in this case that is why we have these two categories of structure otherwise when we are building the structure just by looking at it we cannot say whether it is a truss or a frame but when we go into the analysis part then we have to decide whether we are going to use the a procedure or b procedure 
A procedure is used for truss, B procedure is used for frame. So we have to then categorize whether we will call it a truss or a frame. So let's understand the basic difference between them. Okay. In case of truss, all the members are straight. What do we mean by all members are straight? All members are like this only. Okay. You will not find any member of L shape or C shape or U shape like this. So if you have L shape, C shape, U shape, this type of members, at least one member is like this, then you will call it a frame. Okay. In frame also, it is not necessary that the members have to be of L shape or C shape. No. It is not necessary. Even in case of frames also, all members can be straight. Okay. But in some cases, here it is necessary that all members are straight. Here it is not necessary that all members must be straight. Okay. They can be straight. They can be of L shape, C shape. Okay. So, in frames, all members can be straight or some members can be of L shape or C shape. But here, all members have to be straight. Even if one member is L shape, then we will not call it a truss. Then we will call it a frame because the procedure of analysis will change. Okay. Second difference. In case of truss, members are connected only at the ends. What do I mean by this? See, we are joining different different members in order to make a structure, right? So, we are connecting them using bolts, rivets. In some cases, we even weld the members. Whatever the joining process is, in trusses, all the members are connected only at the ends. Here you can see, these are different members, okay? Can you see that all members are connected only at the ends? We have not connected the members in between. There is no connection in between. There is no joint in between. Either the connection is here at this end or at this end. But in between there is no connection. Okay. In case of frames, members can be connected at the ends or can be connected in between. It doesn't matter. Okay. Third difference. In case of truss, all external forces act only at the joints. What do I mean by this? Understand. In case of truss, what happens is, let's say this is roof. Can you see these wood, wooden pieces? These wooden pieces are known as beams. The beams are supporting the weight of the roof. Now these beams are then supported by this structure. Now, if you look closely in this on this diagram, all these beams are connected to the structures only at the ends. Can you see? All the beams are touching the structure only at the ends. What does this mean? It means that the weight of the roof which is transferred to the beam will then be transferred to the structure. But that weight will be only transferred at the joint. You can't see any beam which is resting in the middle of the member. Can you see any beam which is touching the member between the ends? No. Means all the load is passing through the joints of the members. Okay, the members are not subjected to load between the ends. So, that means this is a truss. If, if it is a frame, it means that the load can act at the ends. The load can also act between the ends. So, in case of frames, it is not necessary that the forces can act only at the joints. They can act anywhere. Okay. Now, the last and the most important difference, the most important difference, all members are two force members in case of truss. But in case of frame, at least one member 
is a multi force member now let me tell you what is the difference between a two force member and a multi force member okay two force means what see if this member is subjected to only two forces okay let's say this member is connected to other members at this end and this end it means the forces will be acting only at these two ends okay so if it is subjected to the forces only at the ends that forces cannot be like this because there is no other force in between okay we have only forces at the ends because it is connected to other members only at the ends so force will be acting only at the ends now can you have the member subjected to two forces like this no because in this case it will not be in equilibrium net moment will not be zero this force and this force they will form a couple so it will not be in equilibrium right now understand can you have forces like this still no because in this case also it will form a couple so if it is subjected to forces only at the ends those forces can be only like this and this in this case they will not be forming any couple and these two forces must be equal and opposite only okay so this is known as a two force member why because it is only subjected to two force okay now understand if you consider a member of frame this member can be subjected to force at the ends it can also be subjected to the force in between the ends now if it is subjected to the force only at the ends then this will also be a two force member only although it is a frame frame can have two force member as well as multi force member look at this at least one member must be multi force member in frame otherwise it is same as truss if here also all members are two force members then it is a truss only na so in order to be a frame at least one member is subjected to multi force member then your entire procedure changes and you call it frame now understand if the member of a frame is a two force member sorry is a straight member and it is also subjected to force only at the ends then it will be same as this but let's say it is a straight member and it is a sub this is subjected to forces at the ends as well as in between then it will be something like this it will be something like this now what it what is it it is a multi force member now it is a multi force member okay let's say it is not subjected to force in between but it is not a straight member understand what i am saying i am saying that it is not subjected to force in between the ends it is subjected to only forces at the ends but it is not a straight member it is let's say l shape member then also it will be a multi force member then also it will become a multi force member like this so what is the criteria of being a two force member see a member will be a two force member only if member is straight and it is only subjected to force at the ends if both these criteria are fulfilled then it will be a two force member otherwise it will be a multi force member okay so what is the criteria to be a two force member it must be straight and the forces must be only acting at the ends 
if it is not straight if it is l shape or c shape it will not be a two force member it will become multi force member and if it is straight but the force is acting between the ends then also it will become a multi force member so both criteria must be fulfilled it must be straight and it must be subjected to forces only at the ends not in between the ends i hope you understand now what is a truss and what is a frame what is the criteria to be a truss all members must be two force members what is the criteria to be a frame at least one member is a multi force member even if one member is a multi force member the criteria the the procedure of solving the problem becomes completely different that is why we have to consider it a different entity frame okay chalo now we have divided this chapter into two parts first we will consider only trusses we will see analysis of trusses and then second we will see analysis of frames okay so today we will only focus on analysis of trusses okay chalo so this is a truss okay i have drawn a very beautiful diagram for you of a truss you can see how each member is only connected at the ends and how each member is straight member can you see all members are straight members and they are only connected at the ends the load is also acting only at the ends okay nowhere else okay so this is a truss a beautiful truss okay now you can see that this end is hinge supported and this end is ruler supported why understand this if we consider two rollers if we put one roller here and one roller here then what will happen is even if i give it a small push okay very small push it will start moving so we have to constrain it from moving so we have to make at least one support as a hinge support but what about the other support so here if i make this one also a hinge support what happens is this will be constrained in y direction as well as x direction so what happens is if there is change in temperature let's say it is summer time the temperature is increased what if the temperature increases this material is trying to expand but there is no way it can expand right because this will is also a hinge support this one is also a hinge support so if you do not let this material to expand it will create unnecessary forces unnecessary stresses so in order to not have those unnecessary forces we make one support as a roller support so what happens is if the temperature increases in future it will easily expand freely and there will be no unnecessary force okay let me show you i have a picture of rollers can you see can you see here can you see here this is a roller support this is a roller support in reality the roller support looks like this okay you might have seen this only in the diagrams na but in real pictures it looks like this even in very heavy structures we can see these type of rollers why they have provided so that there is pre expansion due to change in temperature and it will not create any unnecessary reaction okay now i have drawn this picture so that you can understand how the load is only acting at the joints can you see that this is the road okay this is the road and the road is supported on this structure but the connection is only at the joints the road is connected to this structure only at the joints we are not connecting the road in between the joints so when the car passes on the road the load of car will be transferred to the road and the load of road will be transferred to the joints because it is only connected at the joints there is no connection between the joints so the load will be transferred only at the joints okay so this is how we make sure 
दैट द लोड एक्ट ओनली एट द ज्वाइंट एंड इट इज अ ट्रस ओके चलो दिस इज ऑल्सो अ ट्रस दिस इज नोन एज अ रूफ ट्रस कैन यू सी अ रूफ ट्रस ओके नाउ अंडरस्टैंड देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रसेस प्लेन ट्रस एंड स्पेस ट्रस वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैम If all the members are in a single plane, all members are in a single plane, then it is known as a plane truss. But if the members are in different different planes, then it is known as a space space truss. Can you see? The members are not in a single plane here; they are in different different planes. But here you can see that when this road is connected to the structure, there is one structure here, one structure here. One structure is connected to one end of the road. one structure is connected to one end of the road now this structure all the members of this structure are, are in one single plane can you see all the members of this structure are in one single plane and same goes with the other end all the members are in one single plane so this is the example of plane truss here also you can see all these members are lying in a single plane like this they are in single plane okay so this is also plane truss okay then what is the example of space truss practical example mobile tower you might have seen na mobile tower or the tower which supports high tension cables you might have seen these towers when you go on a road trip because usually these high tension cables na they pass through open grounds okay so you can see those grounds when you go on a road trip okay when you go outside the city na then you see these type of towers and those towers are nothing but examples of space truss okay chalo now when we do the analysis of plane truss there are some points which we need to understand what some of these points are not actually true they are just assumptions and some of these are actually true for example the first point all the members are connected only at the ends now this is not an assumption this is actually true we are connecting all the members only at the ends you can see here you can see here all the members are connected only at the ends na can you see okay so this is true second point all joints are frictionless pin joints now this is assumption in some cases the members are not connected by pins they are connected by weld but still we are assuming that they are pin joints that to frictionless pin joint what do we mean by frictionless pin joint see understand if i am connecting these two members using a pin it means that if i want to rotate them they will rotate they are not going to constrain the rotation of the body so there will be no couple produced here how do you get a couple when you constrain the rotation now when i am applying a force on a body it wants to rotate and if i constrain the rotation then i get a couple as a reaction but if these members are connected by a pin then they will freely rotate na but what if these pins have friction then if you want to rotate they will not rotate freely then you will get a couple so that's why we assume that these pins are frictionless so what happens is at the joints you do not get any couple here you will not get any couple here you will not get any couple here you will not get any couple because you are assuming all these joints are frictionless pin joints okay second assumption loads are me this is not the assumption this is true loads are only applied at the joints and i have explained this next all the members are subjected to only axial loads or in other words these members are two force members can you see i have explained two force members right so all members of truss are two force members means they are subjected to only axial loads now these loads can be tensile or compressive okay some members will be subjected to tensile forces some members will be subjected to compressive forces okay so the force can be tensile or compressive but they will be only axial loads okay i hope it is clear now weight of the members is assumed negligible 
वेट ऑफ द मेंबर्स इज अज्यूम्ड नेग्लेजिबल मींस व्हाट सी व्हेन वी कंसीडर द एनालिसिस ऑफ ट्रस्ट ना दे आर सब्जेक्टेड टू सम वेरी हेवी लोड्स कंपेयर टू दीज वेरी हेवी लोड्स द वेट ऑफ मेंबर्स इज नथिंग फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से दे आर सब्जेक्टेड टू थाउजेंड न्यूटन एंड द वेट ऑफ ईच मेंबर इज लेट्स से फाइव के जी फाइव मींस रफली फिफ्टी न्यूटन so the weight of members is 50 newton and they are subjected to force of 1000 newton so compared to 1000 newton 50 newton is nothing chiller so that is why we ignore the weight of the members so that our calculation becomes easy okay because ultimately we need to find the force in each member quickly okay so that's why the members are assumed to be weightless practically it is not possible practically these members are not weightless exactly but their weights are so little compared to the forces acting on them that we can ignore these weights okay why we have this picture here i wanted you to know that actually they are not always connected by pins they are not pins okay they are connected by rivets can you see this plate this plate is known as a gusset plate okay so the members are connected to the gusset plate and this gusset plate is connected to members by rivets so here this is not a pin joint but when we will solve the problem na then we will assume this to be a pin joint why because it makes our calculation easy and we do not get too much error if you are thinking if we consider this as a pin joint will there be lot of error no the calculations are almost errorless that is why we started this procedure okay chalo now when it comes to solving a problem of trust what is our objective our objective is finding the force in each of these members and when i say finding the force in each of these members we need to calculate the magnitude of force and we also need to find whether the force is tensile or compressive see if the member is subjected to tensile force na then the design process is different and if the member is subjected to compressive force then the design process is different how it is different that you understand in machine design and strength of materials okay so here your only job is to find out whether the force is tensile or compressive how they are different what difference will it make that you study in strength of materials and machine design okay but we need to find the magnitude of force as well as the nature of the force whether the force is tensile or compressive that is our objective now in order to solve the problem in order to find the force we have two methods one is known as method of joint and other one is known as method of sections we will understand both the methods you can solve any problem using method of joint as well as method of section we will understand both the methods when there is a question in exam whether you will apply method of joint or a method of section that you will decide yourself once you understand both the methods you will understand whether a problem has to be solved by method of joint or method of section okay there is no thumb rule that if the problem is like this use method of joint if the problem is like this use method of section there is no thumb rule that decision has to be taken by you only and once you solve problems by both the methods then you will be able to decide then you will be able to take this decision whether to do, go for method of joint or method of section okay so let's move to the first method which is the method of joints okay now what is method of joints what do we mean by method of joints in order to understand that let's consider a simple truss this is the simplest form of truss triangle if three members are connected using pin joints then they become a structure why because if there are only two members if you connect only two members using a pin then these two members can move with respect to each other then it is not a structure if you connect four members using pins then also they can move with respect to each other 
this you will understand in theory of machines so this is also not a structure so when you connect three members using a pin then it becomes a structure because now these members are logged now if you apply force these members cannot move with respect to each other so this is the most basic form of a truss okay a triangle so let's say we have the most basic truss it has three members can you see ab bc and ac okay now we are sub applying a force of 2 kN our objective is to find the force in ab what is our objective our objective is to find force in ab force in bc and force in ac this is our objective okay we need to find magnitude as well as the nature of the force tensile or compressive three members the method of joints says that you isolate these joints and you draw the free body diagram of the joints and then you solve the free body diagram how many joints do we have here we have three joints a b and c okay so you can isolate these joints isolate means what if this is joint a i will disconnect this joint from the members and i will draw the free body diagram of this joint and then i will apply equilibrium equations on the joint and i will be able to solve the problem let me give you an example let's isolate joint a okay let's isolate joint a So this is joint A. Okay. What is this? This is joint A. Now this joint A, it is subjected to a 2 kN force. Right? Let me give you a let me have a moment. Here. I am so sorry there was someone at the door so I had to go there is no one at home so sorry for this okay so we have isolated the joint A this joint A is subjected to a 2 kilonewton force this is 2 kilonewton force okay this is 2 kilonewton force now have a look at the joint this joint is connected to two members member ab as well as member ac right this joint is connected to member ab as well as member ac and you have isolated the joint from ab and ac see this joint was connected to ab and ac and now i have done this this is the joint this is the member okay so there must be some force acting between the joint and the member both were connected and now i have disconnected so there must be some force between the joint and the member right now if the force between the member and the joint is tensile then how it is going to look this is the joint this is the member the member is subjected to tension so the force will look like this can you see what is tension beta what is tension tension means something is pulling right if there is tensile force on this member that means that the force is pulling this member same goes with the joint also if the tensile force is acting on the joint it will pull the joint right it will not push the joint pushing means compression pulling means tension 
ओके नाउ राइट नाउ यू डोंट नो वेदर द फोर्स इन ए बी इज टेंसाइल और कंप्रेसिव सो वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू यू आर गोइंग टू अज्यूम लेट्स अज्यूम दैट द फोर्स इज टेंसाइल इफ आई गेट अ पॉजिटिव आंसर माई अजम्पन इज करेक्ट द फोर्स इज टेंसाइल इफ आई गेट अ नेगेटिव आंसर माई अजम्पन इज रॉन्ग द फोर्स इज कंप्रेसिव सेम गोज विथ अज्यूमिंग कंप्रेशन इफ यू आर अज्यूमिंग कंप्रेशन एंड यू आर गेटिंग पॉजिटिव आंसर मीन्स यूर अजम्पन इज करेक्ट द फोर्स इज कंप्रेसिव एंड इफ यू आर अज्यूमिंग कंप्रेशन एंड यू आर गेटिंग नेगेटिव आंसर मीन्स यूर अजम्पन इज रॉन्ग द फोर्स इज टेंसाइल so it depends upon your assumption whether the positive is tensile or negative is tensile okay so let's assume that the force in ab is tensile it means that force must be pulling the joint it will be like this this is f ab okay and let's assume the force between the joint and ac is also tensile it means this is also pulling this this is f ac okay now from this you can easily tell this is 2 meter this is 2 meter so the angle is 45 degree this angle is also 45 degree so this angle is 45 degree this is also 45 degree okay now this is the free body diagram of joint a okay i hope it is understood how you can isolate the joint and how you can draw the fbd of joint okay the joint was subjected to 2 kN force and the joint was connected to ab and ac So this is the two kilonewton force. This is the force AB. This is the force AC. We have assumed both to be tensile. That is why they are pulling the joint. Okay. Now, how many unknown forces do you see here? You see two unknown forces, FAB and FAC. How many equilibrium equations do you have? You have two equilibrium equations: summation of FX equals to zero, summation of FY equal to zero. So you can either use equilibrium equation, or in this case, you can also apply. lamis theorem okay it is your choice once you draw the free body diagram then how you are going to solve that that is up to you whether you use lamis theorem whether you use equilibrium equation that is up to you so beta let's apply equilibrium equations so from summation of fx equals to 0 what i am going to get in x direction there is 2 kN and there is cos component of fac So I can write it like this: FAC cos 45 plus 2. Both are in positive x direction, equal to zero. So from here I will get FAC. What is it? 2 by cos 45, 2 root 2, and it will be negative. Can you see? This is negative. now what does the negative sign indicate the negative sign indicates that this force is compressive i have assumed the force to be tensile i have assumed the force to be tensile but i am getting negative answer means it is compressive okay now i will apply summation of fy equal to 0 in summation of fy equal to 0 in y direction you have fab and cos or sin component of fbc fac you can take it sin you can take it cos doesn't matter because sin 45 and cos 45 both are same so here what you are going to get fab plus fac sin 45 so this will be minus 2 root 2 sin 45 sin 45 is 1 by root 2 so fab will be equal to 2 kN and this is positive i have assumed tensile i am getting positive answer means this is tensile so we have calculated the force in ab 
as well as AC. Force in AB is tensile, force in AC is compressive. Now, we also need to find the force in member BC. Na? In order to do that, we can either draw the FBD of joint B or we can draw the FBD of joint C. If I draw the FBD of joint B, there will be two reactions here. Okay. So, two reactions and two member forces. There will be total four forces. But if I draw the joint C, due to roller, there will be only one reaction. Okay. You have to consider the reaction also because the reaction force will also be acting at the joint. Na? So, here there are two reactions and two member forces. Here there is only one reaction and two member forces. So, there are three forces here. There are four forces here. So, which one will you consider? Obviously, joint C, right? So, let's draw the FBD of joint C. This is joint C. It is subjected to a reaction. Okay. Then there is one member connected like this and there is one member connected like this. This is reaction RC. This is FBC. This is FAC. And we have already calculated FAC. How much is it? FAC is minus 2 root 2. Okay. I have calculated it minus 2 root 2. So, here also I will put minus 2 root 2 only. Okay. Because here also I am assuming it to be tensile. So, I have to put negative sign. Okay. And this is 45 degree. Now, here we need to calculate FBC. So, we will apply only summation of Fx equal to 0. So, it will give me FBC plus FAC cos 45 equal to 0. Right? FAC is minus 2 root 2 cos 45 equal to 0. So, FBC will also be 2 kilo newton. Again, I am getting tensile, sorry, positive answer. I have assumed this to be tensile and I am getting positive answer means it is tensile only. So, now we have the force in each member FAB, FBC, FAC. So, this is method of joints. Now, when it comes to method of joints, you can only solve very simple problems using this. If there is a very lengthy truss, then you will not be able to use this. Because here, we need to apply method of joints multiple times in some cases. Okay. So, that is why in lengthy problems, we cannot use this method. So, we will only use this method when we have simple trusses like this, very basic type of trusses like this. Okay. Let us see. So, this is the problem. Find the force in all members of the truss shown in figure. Assume G equal to 10 meter per second square. Can you see this is a very beautiful truss, a simple triangular truss. So, there are three members AB, BC, AC. This is hinge support, this is roller support. And here we have a weight hanging. The weight is 100 kg and the value of G is 10. It means this is 100 into 10, 1000 Newton. Okay. Now, you have to apply method of joints. So, what we are going to do is, first we will apply the method of joint at joint B. Why joint B? Because here we have only two unknowns. It is subjected to three forces, two member forces and 1000 Newton. So, we have only two unknowns. If I consider this joint or this joint, na, then there will be more than two unknowns and we have only two equilibrium equations. So, we will not be able to solve 
joint A or joint C directly. We have to first solve joint B. This is joint B. It is subjected to 1000 Newton weight. Then there is one member like this and one member like this. I am assuming all the members to be subjected to tensile force only. Okay. So this is FAB, assuming it to be tensile. This is FBC, assuming this also to be tensile. How much is this angle, beta? This angle is not 45 degree, okay? You have to calculate this angle. You have to calculate this angle. It will be 10 inverse of 5 divided by 12. Twenty two point six two degree. Okay. So this is twenty two point six two degree. So here you have two equilibrium equations. Summation of F Y equal to zero will give you F B C sine twenty two point six two plus thousand equal to zero. So, FBC is equal to how much? 1000 divided by sine 22.62, which is around 2600 Newton. Around 2600 Newton. And it will be negative. So, we have assumed it to be tensile, but we are getting negative answer. So, this is compressive. Okay. Then, summation of fx equals to 0 what will it give you fab plus fbc cos 22.62 equal to 0 so from here you will get the value of fab i am getting almost 2400 newton and you can see that This is positive, so it will be tensile. Okay, so we have calculated FAB, FBC. Now we have to calculate FAC. For that, you can either draw the FBD of joint A or joint C. I will choose joint C because of the same reason less number of forces. This is joint C. It is subjected to a roller's reaction, one reaction due to roller support like this. Then there is one force like this. And then there is one force like this. Na? This is RC, this is FAC which we need to find and this is FBC which we have already calculated minus 2600 Newton and this angle is 22.62. So here we need to find FAC na? So, summation of Fy equal to 0, it will give you Fac plus Fbc sin 22.62 equal to 0. So, from here Fac is around 1000 Newton and this will also be positive. So we have assumed this to be tensile and we are getting positive answer though this must be tensile. So we have calculated the force in each member. Okay. 
2600 newton 2400 newton and 1000 newton fbc is compressive fab and fac are tensile now in this problem i asked you to solve find the force in each member in gate you will not get this type of question so in gate what type of question you can expect let's see this is a question from gate 2016 and this is of two marks a two member truss pqr is supporting a load w axial force in member pq and qr okay so here they are asking you to find force in two members okay there are only two members so this type of problem you can get you can easily find these two forces within two three minutes and this is a very basic problem so here we will apply method of joints so by considering the joint q you will easily get all the forces okay this is joint q f p q f r q and w this is w this is f p q this is f r q right let me write it q r and this angle is 30 degree this angle is 60 degree now here you can apply e equilibrium equations or you can use the lamy's theorem also let's solve this problem using lamy's theorem okay so this is fpq divided by sine of angle between these two forces is 60 degree w divided by sine of angle between these two forces is 30 degree and fqr divided by sine of angle between fpq and w it is how much 180 plus 90 270 degree okay so from here fpq will be w sin 60 by sin 30 sin 60 by sin 30 is root 3 and fqr will be equal to sin 270 by sin 30 so minus 2 w so easily we can get fpq and fqr now we have assumed both this to be tensile and we are getting fpq positive so this is tensile but we are getting fqr negative so this is compressive so what will be the answer fpq is root 3 w tensile and fqr is minus 2 w compressive so root 3 w tensile and 2 w compressive this is the correct answer okay so you can expect this type of question in gate and when you get this simple type of question basic question you will easily apply method of joint you can understand okay this problem can be solved easily by method of joint here we don't need method of sections okay now the next problem this problem is your assignment okay so solve this assignment and we will see the answer to this question in the next class till then bye bye take care and good night